This is flow graphs example number two. Find the system function and difference equation for a flow graph, and then find the transpose flow graph and compare it to the original. Here we are given a flow graph with specific values for the variables f and g. The flow graph translates an input x into an output y. We are looking for the system function h of z. And this is defined as the z transform of the output divided by the z transform of the input. So let me begin by labeling the input and the output in the z domain. And the main concept that we use to analyze uh, any flow graph, we can create intermediate variables at the summing junctions. Now as we observe here, at this point, we are splitting the signal into two different paths. Now here we see two coming together, so that implies a summation. And the same thing is true here. In this case, we're back to a splitter because we are not bringing together uh, two or more signals. Now the letters are arbitrary, but I'll use V of N and W of N to describe the results at these two summing junctions. Now we'll notice that as X of N passes through the delay line, that's going to change it to X of N minus one. We would then multiply minus G times the value that's seen here, and that would be Y of N. That means we can write our first difference equation, V of N equals uh, X of N minus one minus G of Y of N. In a similar fashion, we would write a difference equation for W of N, and then we recognize that Y of N is uh, really a modified version of w, w of N. Now once we have these difference equations, we can apply the Z transform and send those into the Z domain. And from here we can solve for the ratio Y of Z to X of Z, and that's our system function. Now in part B, we're wanting to write a single difference equation for the entire system. Once we have the system function, we're pretty much set. We want to write out Y of Z multiplied by some collection of coefficients and uh, powers of Z inverse, similar for X of Z. And then when we do the inverse transform, we will be able to write out Y of N and its delayed versions. Then we would have X of N and its delayed versions, and you simply put everything on the right-hand side. Now in part C, we want to draw the transpose of the given flow graph. The transpose is three steps. First, we reverse all the arrow directions. We then interchange the labels X and Y, and then we flip the flow graph around to place the input back on the left side. Now in part D, we want to determine the system function of the transposed flow graph that we just created. And for this, we use the same procedure as we did in part A. Finally, we want to look at the two system functions and determine whether or not they are equal. And we expect the answer to be yes due to the flow graph transposition theorem, which says that the transposed flow graph is equivalent. Well, let's move into the detailed solution. First, we'll create the intermediate variables at the summing junctions. I'll call this V of N, and I'll call this one W of N. At this point, I can begin writing the difference equations. V of N, we have X of N passing through a delay element. We would write that as X of N minus one. Next, I bring in a scaled version of Y of N. The scale factor is minus one half. 
So I write minus one half times y of n. And that completes the summation for v of n. Moving on to the next one, w of n equals the sum of, here we see x of n and uh, a version of v of n entering. v of n pass, passes through a single delay. I'll write that as v of n minus one. x of n passes through the scale factor of three. And that would be three x of n. Now finally, y of n is the single delayed version of w of n. All right, let's apply the z transform to all three of these equations. Now x of n minus one comes across as x of z times z to the minus one. This would be minus one half times y of z. All right, now we have w of z times v of z times z of minus one plus three times x of z. And similarly, y of z is w of z times z inverse. Now I'm looking ultimately for an equation that contains only y and x. Now I notice that w could be substituted in here and v could be substituted in right there and that will clear the intermediate variables and we'll be left only with y and x. So let's get started here. I'll take care of the substitution of w of z and now let me take care of the substitution of v of z. Let me continue by multiplying across the z inverse term. We notice that turns this one into z inverse squared. And I'll distribute that z inverse squared across. And at this point, I want to collect all of my y terms together. So I'll bring that on the left hand, left hand side. And let me then pull out y and x as the common variables here. And we're getting pretty close. Let me drop x of z underneath and we'll put this one on the other side in the denominator. And this gives me my system function h of z. So there's our end result for part a. Now in part B, I'm going to begin with that system function that we just found. And let me get this back into the form where I associate the polynomials with y of z and x of z. From here I can apply the inverse z transform. We would have y of n and then the twice delayed version of y of n multiplied by one half. Again, z inverse squared would translate into y of n minus two. Looks like we've got three times x of n minus one plus x of n delayed by three. Let me put this on the right hand side and that gives me the difference equation that we were looking for in part B. All right, now in part C, we are looking for the transposed version of our flow graph. First thing we need to do is interchange all of the arrow positions. I'll begin by drawing the chain of arrows and then I'll add these arcs here, again flipping the arrow directions. Now any labeled values that we have on the arrows, they all just come, come through unchanged. 
we change out X and Y labels. So we have Y of N over here and X of N over here. Now we need to interchange or, or flip around the flow graph to get it back to having the input on the left side. That's our result for part C. Now in part D we want to analyze this new flow graph structure. We'll do this in the same way that we did for part A. So I need to identify the summing junctions. Now this W and V are not the same thing as in part A. I'm just basically recycling the labels here. So in a similar fashion, we have x of n coming together with minus one half times the twice delayed version of w of n. So that would be w of n minus two. v of n is composed of two parts. We have w of n passing through three individual delays. That would be w of n minus three. Then we have three times this value right here. And that would be W of N delayed once. Now at this point, it becomes clear that Y is really the same thing as V. So let me go ahead and change that to Y of N. And there's just one less variable to worry about. And as we did before, take this into the Z transform domain. And it looks like I can collect together all the terms associated with W. Putting the polynomial on the other side, we have W equals X divided by one plus one half Z inverse squared. Now I've got W appearing in two places, and that leaves us with this polynomial. And now I can go ahead and substitute in that value for W. Bring X to the other side because we're trying to find a system function. And the system function for our transposed flow graph appears like this, and that's our result for part D. Now finally in part E we want to compare the results we had from the original flow graph to this transposed version. More specifically, are these two actually equal? And if you study the h of z and the h sub t of z, we find that they are in fact the same. And that's exactly what we expect based on the flow graph transposition theorem.